he would weep for the people of Israel, just like Jesus wept for the people of Israel. He was a man of sorrows, of many sorrows, but he was also a man of great hope. And he showed a picture of Jesus Christ. And it's so exciting. So we're going to get into how Jeremiah was a type and a picture of Jesus Christ right now, my friend. Here we go. Hey, don't forget, my friend, you can check out my new book, See Jesus in the Old Testament. It's available on Amazon right now, Barnes & Noble, and Apple iBooks, and many other places. So check it out if you get a chance, my friend. So let's go into the presentation. Jeremiah and Christ. Here we are. So he was also despised and rejected by his own, just like Jesus was, because Jeremiah didn't have, he didn't have one convert Nobody believed him, his report, even though he was speaking, God was speaking through him. And he was one of the greatest prophets ever. In fact, Daniel later references Jeremiah, the scroll of Jeremiah, and realizes they only had 70 years of captivity, and he knew that time was almost up. So he began preparing to that the people of Israel be released from their captivity, right? Well, that was Jeremiah. Also, Jeremiah 31 shows a huge picture, or a prophecy actually, of how Jesus is going to rescue and save Israel in the end times. So it's really cool. Well, let's continue on in this uh, in this presentation. So he was despised and rejected. Jeremiah, he was called the weeping prophet. Jesus wept over Jerusalem before the destruction in the temple. And he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Just like Isaiah 53 says, it ties in with Jeremiah, but ultimately, most powerfully, with Jesus, right? He had no converts. Now, remember, Jesus, even his own family, didn't believe in him as the Messiah until later, after his resurrection. And Jesus really, I mean, his disciples abandoned him in the garden, except for one came back, and that was John. But he really didn't have any converts either, so to speak. And uh, so there's a big picture of that with Isaiah. All right, let's continue on, my friend. So he had no converts. And both were falsely accused, arrested, and unjustly beaten, right? Jeremiah was. And here's the references right here, Matthew 26, Jeremiah 37. Both never abandoned the Jewish people and ultimately offered God's comfort and hope to them. And that's in John chapter 14 and Jeremiah 31 and Lamentations 3 for your reference. So Jeremiah 37, then the officials were angry at Jeremiah and they beat him and they put him in prison. Wow, that's a, that's what happened to Jesus, right? He was beat. Remember, he was scourged and he was locked up and he was bound and put in prison until he was crucified. But this was to fulfill everything that was written about him, including in these types like with Jeremiah. So it's it was all fulfilled, all according to God's plan. And then Jeremiah 31, this is how we could see that Jesus will rescue Israel in the end times. At that time, God says, right, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, not the church, Israel, my friend. Now, the church is his bride, right? You can't get any closer than that, but his family is Israel. And they shall be my people. That means they will be his people. There's no doubt about it, my friend. It's clear as can be. You do not want to use these scriptures and say that all of these promises were really meant for the church. That's false theology. You don't want to believe that. What you want to believe is using the Bible to explain the Bible. For instance, Joseph's story, right? He had a Gentile bride in a Gentile land. So did Moses. But then during a time of great trouble, his brethren, the Jewish people, they come back to him. They were bowed down before him and he forgives them. He reveals that he's alive, right? And they were, they were shocked. And then they ended up what they were weeping together, just like Zechariah 12. They wept together, each brother with Joseph, each of the tribes of Israel with Jesus. That's what's coming in the future. And it's going to be a time of great reconciliation, great restoration and healing and forgiveness. And it's going to be a glorious day when that happens. So, hey. The next episode is going to be in Jeremiah 31. I'm excited about that. Hope you will watch it and check it out. Don't forget to check out my new book on Amazon. And don't forget to leave 
a review because that'll get the book out to the whole world, as many as possible. So please, please leave a review if you get that book on Amazon, my friend. And you can click on this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. So click on this playlist too.